I write she should be taken out of the country for the cold-blooded murder of the English tongue. Ow! Ow! Heavens, what a noise. <laughs> this is what the British population calls an elementary education. Very come, sir. I think you picked a poor example. Did I? Hear them now in so square, dropping H's everywhere, speaking English any way they like. You, sir, you go to school. What are you taking me for, a fool? No, I'm taught him tape instead of tight. Hear a Yorkshireman, or worse, hear a Cornishman converse. I'd rather hear a choir singing flat. Chickens cackling in a bar, just like this one. Yeah. Yeah. I ask you, sir, what sort of word is that? It's Ow and God that keep her in her place. Not her wretched clothes and dirty face. Why can't the English teach their children how to speak? This verbal class distinction by an hour should be antique. If you spoke as she does, sir, instead of the way you do, you might be selling flowers to I beg your pardon. The Englishman's way of speaking absolutely classifies it. The moment he talks, he makes some other Englishman. One common language I'm afraid we'll never get. Why can't the English learn to set a good example to people whose English is painful to your ears? The Scots and the Irish leave you close to tears. There are even are places where English completely disappears. In America, they haven't used it for years. Why can't the English teach their children how to speak? Norwegians learn Norwegian. The Greeks support their Greek. In France, every Frenchman knows his language from A to Z. Uh, the French don't care what they do, actually, as long as they pronounce it properly. <laughs> Arabians learn Arabian with the speed of summer lightning. The Hebrews learn it backwards, which is absolutely frightening. Use proper English, you're regarded as a freak. But why can't the English... Why can't the English learn to speak? Yes. My career is over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you hold the book. Erwin, please. Read the line first. Read the line um, first. I find the moment I let a woman make friends with me, she becomes jealous, exacting, suspicious, and a damn nuisance. I find the moment I let myself become friends with a woman, I become selfish and tyrannical. So here I am, a confirmed old bachelor and likely to remain so. After all, Pickering, I'm an ordinary man. 
who desires nothing more than just the ordinary chance to live exactly as he likes and do precisely what he wants. An average man am I, of no eccentric whim, who wants to live his life free of strife, doing whatever he thinks is best for him. Just an ordinary man. But let a woman in your life, and your serenity is true. She'll redecorate your home from the cellar to the dome, then go on to the enthralling fun of overhauling you. Oh, let a woman in your life, and you are up against the wall. Make a plan and you will find she has something else in mind, and so rather than do either, you do something else that neither likes at all. You want to talk of Keats or Milton? She only wants to talk of love. You're going to see a play or ballet and spend it searching for her glove. Oh, let a woman in your life and you invite eternal strife. Let them buy their wedding bands for those anxious little hands. I'd be equally as willing for a dentist to be drilling than to ever let a woman in my life. I'm a very gentle man, even tempered and good natured, whom you never hear complain, who has the milk of human kindness by the quart in every vein. A patient man am I, down to my fingertips, the sort who never could, never would, let an insulting remark escape his lips. Just a very gentle man. But let a woman in your life. And patience hasn't got a chance. She will beg you for advice. Your reply will be concise. And she'll listen very nicely. Then go out and do precisely what she wants. You were a man of grace and polish. Who never spoke about the hush. Now all at once you're using language that would make a sailor blush. Oh, let a woman in your life. And you are plunging in a knife. Let the others of my sex tie the knot around their necks. I'd prefer a new edition of the Spanish Inquisition than to ever let a woman in my life. Quiet living man who prefers to spend his evenings in the silence of his room, who likes an atmosphere as restful as an undiscovered tomb, a pensive man am I, of philosophic joys, who likes to meditate, contemplate, free from humanity's mad in human laws. Just a quiet living man. But let a woman in your life. And your sabbatical is through. In a line that never ends, come an army of her friends, come to jabber and to chatter and to tell her what the matter is with you. She had a booming, boisterous family who will descend on you en masse. She have a large, Wagnerian mother with a voice that shatters glass. Oh, let a woman in your life. Let a woman in your life. Let a woman in your life. I shall never let a woman in my life.